sinners are nothing more than just a bunch of poison. Yes, yes. About raising fish. Oh, yeah, 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 that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Yes. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. He wanted to know about freezing fish. Yeah, freezing fish is okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Like most of us, I'm not around a lot of people. Is that all right to take Dino between the broccoli and... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Bino, she said, is it all right to take the Bino or, you know, some type of, uh, there are um, uh, natural plant enzymes that you can take as a supplement if you have issues with, you know, breaking down a vegetable. I, I had that problem. Um, in fact, I had a couple problems, I had that problem, but I also had the problem with garlic. And... Um, uh, when I was going through recovery, I was eating raw garlic two or three a day. And so at work, I, I stank. I, I just stank of the office. And uh, my manager, he said, Duane, uh, um, I don't know how to tell you this, but you don't smell too good. Uh, uh, um, can you stop eating the garlic? And I said, excuse me. He goes, can you stop eating the garlic? I said, okay, the garlic is saving my life, and you're concerned about me stinking up the place? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> so we had conference calls, and, and basically I would call in to the meetings over the phone for about three months. Now I can eat garlic, and, and there's no, no issue. But understand with the vegetables that... Um, uh, like in my case, also, the doctor told me, yeah, Duane, uh, you got to be careful with, the, with that broccoli and that Brussels sprouts. Uh, you know, it has vitamin K. And you're taking Coumadin, and you've got deep vein thrombosis. And I said, yeah. So what you're telling me, I should stop eating one of God's most, oh, yeah, when you say God, doctors don't like that. Yeah, I should stop eating one of the most powerful foods because you're concerned about my vitamin K level. He goes, Dwayne, that's right. Because you can have a pulmonary embolism. And they put that fear into you. So I said, well, why don't we increase my Coumadin dosage to align with the amount of vitamin K I'm consuming? He goes, yeah, I guess we could do that. And see, if we had not done that, I would still be on Coumadin today. The objective is to get you on the drug and to keep you on the drug. And once we got you on one drug, we want to get you on two. And then when we get you on two, we want to get you on four. Then we got you on four. It is the perfect mode of operation designed by the drug pusher of the 1970s. If a drug pusher moved next door to you, sir, selling some cocaine or heroin, would you welcome him to your neighborhood? Right. He would not welcome a drug pusher selling cocaine in his neighborhood. However, all of us welcome the top three drug pushers in America into our neighborhoods and into our homes. Everyone knows the number one drug pusher is the pharmaceutical company who feeds the doctor, who's number two, with the pharmacist. The number three drug pusher, and I may move them up to number one. Anybody know who's number one? Huh? Government. Yeah, government. Government, government number one. And television, I probably should put them in there too. Because television is the medium that converts your children into accepting drugs in our society. Yes? Concerning deep vein thrombosis? Yes. The, the model that's in my book is a six-stage medical protocol. One of the problems that we all have, people here dealing in the um, 
alternative medicine arena is that the traditional doctor rejects you, rejects us. When I gave a presentation to a group of endocrinologists, I didn't tell them that I had a six-stage model. What I did is I asked them specific questions about the progression of type 2 diabetes. And they answered the questions based on their knowledge. And so I asked them, so what is the threshold for a type 2 diabetic in terms of their hemoglobin A1C, in terms of their fasting blood glucose level, in terms of the homocysteine, their C-reactive protein? And they're going, oh, you're, you're, that's kind of thorough. I said, yeah, I just, I just, I just want to learn. Well, once they gave me all the answers, I then threw the model up on my projector. And they just went, oh, that's all, that's, that's what we did. I said, yeah, that's what you did. I said, so what's wrong with this medical protocol? And they tried to break it down. But I said, but didn't you just tell me? And they go, yeah. I said, so either you're lying to me then or you're lying to me now. Which one is it? So the six-stage model is a medical protocol. And if you look at the numbers, <laughs> They come from the, 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 the doctor said, you're not a doctor. Where did you come up with that data? I said, I went to WebMD. I also happen to have access to the CDC uh, database. <laughs> well, actually, I don't. I, through some computer error, <laughs> I receive reports from the CDC. And if you tell anybody, I'll say that you're lying. <laughs> Somewhere my name is D. Wayne. D, little e, big W, D. Wayne. Well, somewhere in the computer, the E got changed to an R. <laughs> yeah. My mother said that's just God working. <laughs> so I got access to a lot of information. I said, whoa, so this is what's happening in the medical. Ooh, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. If you were to get lax on your meal planning, would yep. your sugars glucose jump back up? Again? Very good. Very good question, sir. Very good question. The answer is no. Because I've already tried. I eat whatever I want. I still eat. I eat ice cream. I eat pizza. I eat whatever I want. You got to understand something. I'm no longer diabetic. See, think about whoever in this room is a diabetic, type 2 diabetic. At one time in your life, you were not a diabetic. At one time in your life, you could eat whatever you want. You didn't have to worry about your blood sugar. Why? Because your cells aren't working. Your cells are defective. If the cells are repaired, and again, everything I'm telling you, <laughs> if you read the newspaper article back there, uh, my doctor, he said, we don't know how to explain it, but Dwayne is no longer diabetic. And he got into a little bit of trouble. He had to recant his statement later. Um, but uh, um, if you look at the, the, the medical protocol, and if you look at, there's a, there's a stress test that you can do in terms of monitoring your blood glucose level. All you have to do, eat some ice cream or pizza or whatever, Take a post-meal reading two hours later. If my blood glucose level has not returned to normal, I'm diabetic. So anyone in here who's not diabetic, if they did the same test, their blood glucose level would return to normal. A diabetic's blood glucose level stays high. So they kind of put me through, they've actually, my doctors called me in, they run tests on me, and they don't charge me anything. In fact, when I go in to see my doctor, um, I still test my blood glucose, maybe not eight times a day, maybe a couple times a day. I still collect the data, I still do the analysis. When I go in for my annual physical, my doctor, my personal care doctor, shakes his head. He said, Dwayne, I, I just can't believe this. Um, but the endocrinologist will not see me, he will not talk to me. Yes, yes sir. I have two questions. Yes. Number one is I have 
Bom.